This video, I'm going to be attempting to clean up this tired old rescue juniper bonsai. I'll also be doing an update of the Portulacaria afra bonsai that I've got under my Mars Hydro grow light. So let's dive in. I think I'll start by removing these weeds from the soil. This tree is a recent purchase that I got as part of a job lot from a gentleman who was giving up the hobby. There's some more of that Irish moss. Evil stuff, evil. A lot of the trees had fallen into um, poor health simply because the guy just did not have enough time to give the trees that he had the, the care and attention that they needed. So I seized the opportunity to buy the trees. We've got some absolute crackers. You'll be seeing more of them as time goes by. I'm excited to share them with you. For now though, I just thought I'd give this juniper its Christmas wish. See if we can't get it cleaned up and set it up for the long road for recovery. It looks like at one stage it was a, a cherished tree. It's got some beautiful movement, some nice deadwood features, shari, gins. And now it's a shadow of its former self. It's not the time of year to be doing any drastic work and it's definitely not healthy enough. So there's still fragments of moss left on the live veins but for now I'm going to focus on just giving this deadwood a gentle clean up. See if we can get some of the dirt and detritus off it. Purely in the interests of aesthetics and I'm not sure if we have borers in the UK. If we do get borers in the UK, hopefully, if I clean off the, uh, the flaky bark, they won't have anywhere to hide. Although, I'm given to understand that they're only interested in the healthy trees, and this tree's far from healthy. So I'm going to go through the branches and remove anything that's absolutely, definitely dead. If there's even a sniff of doubt that the material is dead, I'll leave it. So for instance, this branch, ow, <laughs> the juvenile foliage is sharp. So for instance, this branch, that's long dead. I'll cut that right back. Whereas over here, we do have some very small sprigs of living foliage. I'll leave that alone. Just remove the obviously dead stuff. Okay, so out here we do have some living foliage. However, this is dead 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 this piece here is long dead no point saving those try and carefully come to the inside here we've got a lot of pieces on the inside that are clearly dead and perished no matter how unlikely these sprigs look like they could could just still be alive so I'll give them a chance however the clearly dead stuff on the inside can all go so I think next I'm going to take some wire off we've got some wire biting in uh, we remove that sometimes it's better to cut the wire and sometimes it's just you've just got to try and unwind it for fear of damaging the uh, for fear of damaging the live tissue and I think that if you if I am unwinding it essentially use the same technique as applying wire but in reverse so you you're supporting the wire on the branch with your off hand so that it doesn't move around rub or cause damage as it unwinds but I do uh, I do prefer to cut it so we, we risk damaging this branch because they've wired it around this branch so in order to avoid damaging, I'm going to come in, cut that away, make a little bit more space by just prising it open, and I can cut there nice and safely without damaging that branch at all. Again, I'm supporting the wire as I unwind, so it's not going to rip out of where it's bedded in. And there we go, that's all clear of wire. I have to remove this branch. I think I damaged it either when I was cleaning or when it was in transit. It's hanging on by the merest thread of 
live tissue. It's going to cost the tree more energy to deal with this issue than the branch is able to provide. So I think I'm just going to clip that one away. That's a shame. We've got lots of moss and lichen building up on the branches in the upper area and on the main trunk. So I'll also remove that so that the foliage has the best chance of photosynthesizing that I can possibly give it. So it's important that I support any crotches so that I don't end up tearing the two branches apart as I'm scrubbing. I don't want to do any damage. I'm being as gentle as I possibly can. If any of this lichen's more stubborn and won't come off, I'm just very, very gently with my fingers just rubbing it away. Little worm there. Goodbye. I have to balance the risk of cleaning the tree versus accidentally damaging the tree. Here we've got some foliage with lichen growing on it. It's not clear that the foliage is dead. It, you know, juniper foliage takes quite a while to go brown at times. That bit's dead though. Just trim this dead tip out. You know, if I can improve the situation and accept that it's not perfect, any improvement I'll take, any improvement at all, has got to be a good thing, right? Right? <laughs> right. Just very gently in there. Try and get some of that algae off. Wait a second. I think we've got a bit of scale in here. If anyone's got any tips for treating scale on the juniper, um, drop me a comment. I've got no experience with junipers, so um, I'll take a steer from you folks. The other question I had for you folks is, what, what do you think I should do with this moss? Um, I'm in two minds whether, should I, whether I should remove it and put a fresh layer of soil on top in its place to protect any roots that get exposed, or whether I should leave it on the basis that it might be protecting some good roots under there and, and the act of removing it might well damage those roots. I'd, I, I really don't know which would be the best thing to do so let me know in the comments what I should do with the moss. When I first collected the tree I was thinking oh my gosh this thing's dead. <laughs> I thought it had like two sprigs of juvenile foliage. But having gone through the tree we can see that actually there's a bit more living to there's a bit more living foliage there than I uh, first thought. So I think I'm a little bit more optimistic about this one than I was originally. Anyway, right, let's, uh, let's deal with some of this flaking bark on the live vein and then we'll put some lime sulphur on the shari and the gins. Okay, so I've just got a little flathead screwdriver. It's not the correct or best tool for the job, but it's gonna have to do. Um, I'm going to just come under any flakes of bark and just gently tease them away. Let's just find somewhere I can get an edge, lift it away. I don't want to get too close to the live tissue. Send help, someone stop me, this is so addictive. I need to stop, but I can't. <laughs> oh, I'm absolutely exhausted. That's as satisfying as it is stressful, but I'm absolutely shattered now, so I'm gonna call it a night, come back tomorrow and finish off. Look at all these chunks of uh, bark.
I'm pleased to report that this month at least, the issues that I've been having with my Portulacaria Afra have not been caused by yours truly. So I started noticing these like red, tiny red blobs here and there on the branches and I grabbed my microscope, I had a quick look and what do you know, I've got quite a heavy infestation of spider mites. Additionally to that, the tree dropped all of its foliage, which I've read is typical after a, a repot. I wasn't too worried about the leaves dropping, but the spider mites, that was an issue. So I went ahead and treated with a product called SMC, Spider Mite Control. It's an oil-based product and it seems to have done the trick. I'm treating it fairly regularly, about every three days. I can still see in places there are some very fine webs still, so I'm not sure if we're completely out of the woods yet. But the way this thing's starting to grow and bounce back, I do think that we've got it under control. I'll continue to, to keep an eye on them and we'll see how they go. Apart from the spider mite infestation, I'm really happy with how this thing's doing now. I must admit, I was quite worried after my um, after my errors I, and then it dropped all its leaves. I was a bit... Mm, but yeah, I think we're, we're through the worst of it now. And the Mars Hydro Grow Light, I think it's going to continue to drive this tree forward from here on in. I'm going to start fertilising very heavily. I've been doing some research and apparently they really respond to a heavy fertiliser regime. I did have a bit of organic pellets on the surface to um, feed the soil and slowly break down but I've been reading into it and actually a chemical fertiliser allows me to provide a much much higher dose than I can get into the soil because the soil is very dry the, the, the granuled fertiliser is breaking down, but it's very slow. I think with chemical fertiliser, I'm going to be able to get more nutrients into the soil faster. So I'm going to switch over to that. And hopefully the next time you see this tree, it will have burst into life and will be looking really full and might even be ready to be pruned. We'll see. So yeah, we've definitely got some uh, juniper scale in there. If you look closely, you can see the little brown thing is the juniper. If you look closely, the little brown thing is uh, the actual scale insect and then the white stuff like a waxy stuff. I don't know if it's eggs or just something they exude, I don't know. Either way, um, I'm going to treat with a uh, winter wash of lime sulphur, but please do let me know um, if there's any better approaches that I can use for treating those. Um, I suspect that that's got a lot to do with the, uh, the tree struggling as well as, it, as well as its lack of maintenance. So yeah, I need to get on top of that quick sharp. Now I'm going to paint the deadwood with some lime sulphur. Body. this juniper is now done at least for this iteration I could have gone a lot further um, but I just didn't want to jeopardize the health of the tree so I'm gonna leave it at that for now I think we've we've done pretty well actually there's a lot more foliage there than I thought there would be we found at least one of the causes for the juniper's apparent ill health in the scale insects don't forget to let me know any advice for treating those I think it's looking I think it's looking quite a bit better now. I'm happy with the result. Also, your advice on whether to remove this moss and freshen the top layer of soil. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. If you got any enjoyment at all out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could share the link to this video on a bonsai Facebook group. That would be just fantastic. That would make my Christmas, that would, if you could do that. Wait a sec. Something's missing. Huh? What do you think? Huh? Looking swanky. <laughs> All right, I think we've just made this juniper's Christmas. It's over to you now, buddy. Thanks for watching. Have a great Christmas. Have a better new year than 2020. The amount of hours that have gone into this 
video in this tree is unbelievable. I did not think it would take that long. Now I've got to carry it back outside. I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh.